Woo! What's going on, fine folks? Fine, fine, fine folks. What a lovely day today. Another day to be grateful to, you know, walk this earth. So anyway, today we have an IKEA furniture assembly, and it's actually for uh, a customer that, I'm not sure if you guys watched that particular vlog, but we did a IKEA assembly for him. The guy's name was Paolo. He's a student here uh, in the Boston area. And, uh, you know, basically during that assembly, there was some IKEA furniture that came uh, damaged and he just opted to continue to build it without the shelves that came damaged. And so he's got a bunch of other IKEA furniture today. We've got a bed, coffee table, bar stool, nightstand, a day bed, a five piece dining set, and a floor lamp, all right? So we're gonna take care of our boy Paolo today. You know, make sure he gets all set up. Um, right now in the in the Boston area, it's August, so all the students are moving in. And so we get a ton of IKEA furniture. We get a ton of uh, furniture installations that include multiple items, right? So I'm always excited for that. So excited to you know see our friend again. He was a pretty cool guy, but let me get in the car, stop yapping, get to the site. We'll see you there. All right, guys, on site, and is it a pain to park? Even on a Sunday morning. But you know the deal. Roll call. Make sure I got my tools. I'm trying to think if there's anything in particular that I might need that I don't typically bring with me. I'm not parked too far, so I'm just gonna bring my tool bag. Of course, get the tripod, do some recording, grab my table, grab my shoe covers. And I know what I definitely can't forget is mask. Boom. All right, I think we're good to go. So the area of Boston that we're in is called Back Bay, and there's a lot of brownstone buildings. Look how beautiful these buildings are. Look at that. Yeah, one of the nicest neighborhoods uh, in the Boston area. But anyway, guys, I have somewhat of a dilemma. So you guys know I love to make these vlogs and videos as entertaining as possible. You know, show you the ins and outs, the details of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. But here's the thing, I'm a basketball fan and it's the playoffs right now. And the Celtics are playing the Raptors in game one of the quarterfinals of the Eastern Conference. So I'm in a dilemma. Do I show you guys the ins and outs or do I just kind of speed through this thing and try to catch the game? Because it's approximately two and a half hours from now. I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I show you guys the details? I don't know. We'll see. So anyway, guys, I'm about to roll into Paolo's house. I'm going to throw my mask on and uh, continue the journey. I hope you guys can hear me. Awesome. How you doing, man? Uh, hey. Oh, you got the, uh, the sandals on. Oh. <laughs> Matching, man. I love oh, those no sneakers. Yeah, right. man. I love these sneakers. They do good too. Yeah, they do. I can't remember, did we go upstairs or were we on this first? Ah, uh, no, upstairs. Is it upstairs? Okay, yeah. I just. Four, oh, four. Okay. No, I couldn't remember. How's your morning doing? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. Sure. Enjoying the, the nice day? This is a nice day. It, it is, is really nice. Out, right? Yeah, yeah. So, this is going to be a challenge for us. Okay. There's a lot of stuff. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. showed me the list of stuff, so. Shouldn't be too bad. Really? All right. No, I'll, I'll be fine. Um, so, I'm just trying to think. Did you start? Yeah, I'm just trying to think which one I want to do first. So I have like this little bed frame. Okay. Um, would it be dangerous to be up upstairs or no? Oh, uh, well, let's see what we got. Yeah. It's a little bit um, shaky upstairs. Uh, uh, oh, no, yeah. I can, I can assemble up here. Oh, okay. I can assemble up here. Cool. Maybe I might even do like the smaller stuff first. Okay. The ones that are obvious, like the stool. All right, cool. Also, important question, Gatorade or water? Uh, Gatorade would be good. Right, red or green? Uh, red's cool. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Remember, if you ever want to slow the video, click the settings icon and adjust the playback speed. All right, guys, so we started off with the Raskog bar stool from Ikea, and Paolo, our customer, had us assemble two of them, but I'll demonstrate one for now. This is a relatively easy and straightforward piece of furniture to assemble, but the easiest and most common mistake the average person makes would be assembling it with it being rocky or wobbly once it's on its feet. The secret to avoiding rocky furniture, whether it be a dining chair, a table, or a bar stool like this one, is to finger tighten all the bolts in place to start, then fully tightening all the bolts of the furniture when it's standing on its four legs like I'm doing here. This will ensure that all four legs will permanently touch the ground whether someone is sitting on it or not.
Next up was the whole mold floor lamp from Ikea. Again, one of the easier pieces of furniture to assemble, but you'd be surprised how many people would lose their minds putting this together. And it's not because they're not smart, but mostly because they grow impatient when what they're seeing in the directions doesn't seem to match up with the pieces they have in front of them. If that sounds like you, then the first thing you need to do is to take a deep breath, separate and organize all the pieces so you can distinguish them, then orient or mirror the pieces exactly as shown in the manual when you start attaching parts. The biggest tip I can give you when reading instructions is to watch for small details or markings on furniture which dictate its proper orientation. Take the last step of this assembly. Notice how the plastic tab has a small notch for the metal caster to hook on. If you overlook this detail, then the lampshade will keep dislodging and you'll end up wanting to throw it out the window. Please do not throw your furniture out the window. Have patience, get organized, and try your best to mirror the orientation of the pieces exactly how the instruction manual displays it. So next up we have the Narevic nightstand, and I hope I'm pronouncing that properly. This assembly has the same exact principles as the Raskog bar stool assembly that we just completed. Super easy assembly, and if I had to rank it on a difficulty level of 1 to 10, it would probably be like a negative 8. There's one type of bolt used for the entire furniture, and there's only 16 of them, and they're very, very small. The challenge here though isn't putting it together, but putting it together without it being rocky or wobbly. Remember, when you're assembling any small to mid-sized piece of furniture, that that stands on four legs like a table, chair, or even a bookcase, you should only finger tighten the bolts in place up until you can get the entire piece to stand on all four legs before you go through and tighten all the bolts either manually or with a drill. This is a common practice that you will see in all of our assembly videos. So now we've got the LAC coffee table. I'm not sure if they changed the design of this table recently, but I thought I remembered it being slightly different the last time I assembled it. I could be wrong, and I probably am. Nonetheless, it's a relatively simple build. One suggestion that I will always give is to use some sort of work table any opportunity you can as opposed to working on the floor. Trust me, it will save both your knees and your back. But to start, make sure you identify the correct holes for the cam bolts not to be mistaken for the holes meant for the wooden dowel pins because they're all going to have to line up so that you can connect the side wooden panels. Once the side wooden panels are properly set, make sure the lower shelf is placed on top of the side panels so that it is totally flush. If they are not flush together, you could end up puncturing the furniture when you screw the bolt down to fasten the entire piece. This is especially important if you plan on using a power drill to fasten the bolts like I'm doing here. Next on the list is the Lasabo dining table. So to attach the legs, all you're doing is sliding the legs into the corner notches of the tabletop and then lightly hammering the legs towards the corner away from the center of the table so that it's snug. Then you want to place the four leg fasteners inside the corner grooves and use the lock key provided by IKEA to twist the lock into its fully tightened position. Or you can lightly tighten it until you flip the table on its legs before fully tightening the lock. It's the same principle for tightening the previous four-legged furniture pieces that we assembled using bolts. Next, we had four Idolf or Idolf chairs, and here I've got two tips for you. The first is an obvious one and a repetitive one at this point, and that is, again, to finger tighten the bolts and screws before fully tightening them when it's on its feet. But the next tip is a bit advanced, and that has to do with working more efficiently and assembling two of the same items simultaneously, side by side, step by step, like an assembly line. The main benefit to this is efficiency, because you eliminate wasted motion in walking back and forth, grabbing parts parts and hardware and psychologically you are telling your brain you are actually getting two things done instead of one. But to do this right you have to get organized. Get all of the part A's in one area, all the part B's separated into another area, so on and so forth so you can quickly identify what you need without any confusion. This alone makes the assembly 10 times more enjoyable knowing you're maximizing your time and getting more done. Next up, we assembled the Firesdahl daybed. And to start, you attach the four legs to the back support rail and the side rails, and you fasten them together using the smaller size screws provided in the hardware. Next, we attach the three pieces we just assembled together by finger tightening the bolts. Make sure you identify the left and right side rails and attach them to the proper side because you won't be able to move on to the next steps. 
I actually made that mistake here, but quickly caught myself as I was attaching the side rails. For the rest of the steps, it really comes down to taking your time and orienting the furniture pieces to mirror the instruction manual. This will ensure everything is being put together properly. I want you to pay attention to the zoomed in or magnified part of the illustrations to help show where the long metal rods should be inserted and bolted together. I can easily see this being a step that will confuse people because the rods are not all the same size. So this is why organizing the parts before you start assembling is absolutely critical. The manual will also help you identify the different types of rods that are provided. So again, it's important that you've separated and organized all of the rods so that there's no confusion when installing them towards the end of the assembly. But of course, if instruction manuals just aren't your thing, you can always bring in a professional and make it their headache instead of yours. When you're installing the rods, it's the same motion repeated until both rows are complete. But one important detail that the instruction manual calls out is to attach the plastic rod clip ends onto the rods first before attaching them to the frame. When inserting the plastic rod end clips onto the frame, make sure to push them all the way down until you hear a click. This will let you know that the rods are properly set. If you don't push the clips all the way down, you can potentially end up breaking the teeth of the clips, or worse, bending any of the rods that aren't flush with the frame. And these directions are pretty much the same for the second row of rods. The only difference is the rods for the first row are different sized than the ones used for the second row. But as I'm showing here, I'm doing the rows separately. I'd also strongly suggest you either use some knee pads or lay down a towel on the floor while completing this step in order to protect your knees. Because depending on how quickly you move, you could be down there for a while. And of course, wear gloves to protect your hands, So the last piece of furniture for this IKEA assembly project was the Espivar slatted bed. And of course, we always want to start off with clarity by getting all the parts laid out and organized, including the hardware. What you want to do is start by laying one of the side pieces with the rails attached to it on the ground. Then with the dowel pins in between, slide one of the headboard pieces into the side piece that's on the ground. Safely attach the two metal braces that will hold them together permanently. Then you do the same thing for the opposite headboard. And when those are set, you can attach attach the last side rail on top of the headboards that are sticking up. Remember, there are dowel pins that go in between each of the four pieces to keep them in place as you attach the metal braces at the corners. Lastly, we attach the middle support beam that will hold the wooden slats. All right, man, want to say bye to the crowd? Peace out. <laughs> if you uh, get any other furniture or anything like that, let me know. All right, man. Peace All right, peace. Yeah, okay. Later, man. Yep. Dude, he's a cool dude, man. He's a real cool dude. So, a little bit of a mishap. He got a full-size bed, but Ikea sent him a queen-size mattress. So, he's gonna be sleeping on his queen-size mattress, I'm guessing, until his full-size mattress comes. I don't really know what he's gonna do, but that's twice, right? So, I was here last week, and I forget what happened. Something didn't get delivered in time or something like that. So, it's either it's Ikea or he just got some really, really bad luck. But, um, yeah, it did a ton of stuff. All in all, pretty good assembly. Beautiful day, gorgeous day. You guys gotta understand that here in New England, Man, our winters are freaking brutal. Welcome to New England, guys. You see why during the summertime when I was shooting the vlogs, I was saying how much I'm enjoying being outside and the good weather and all that other fun stuff? Well, that's why. So that's why you see people out. It could be 50 degrees out and people will have shorts on and stuff like that where people who live in warmer areas come to Boston during these days where it might be like 50 out and they're wearing like winter jackets. And we see 50 degree weather pretty much summertime to us. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the assembly. I was in the zone. I was just moving, 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 moving. Brownstones behind me. And of course, I did not get to catch the game. However, the game is being recorded, so I'm gonna try my best to stay away from any phone or any type of billboard that might say the score of the game, but it's my Celtics. I'm guessing that we're gonna get the W. All in all, pretty good day. But yeah, it's weird, man. Ikea's just been kind of messing up, but they got a lot of different furniture that people love, so I think people will put up with it. <laughs> but usually that's what happens. You know, big brands, they get a break. You know, they do more good than they do bad. At least on paper. At least that's what people say. Anyway, guys, check you guys on the next video. Peace.